So I think I've gotten to the final build for the uh, level 2 basic ROM replacement. What you're seeing here is a little ROM daughter card plugged down onto the Radio Shack Mother 1 motherboard. One thing you'll notice is there's no ROM on the top of the package. That's because the ROM is mounted on the other side of the board. There's a notch here to clear that mounting pin. And there's a dip hitch switch here that allows us to uh, select various uh, ROM images. Let's look at the board in a little more detail. Uh, one other quick note is the A11, 12, and 13 address pins are brought in on this little connector here, making it easy to remove this board. So if we look a little closer, here again we can see the connector for A11, 12, and 13 and the three wires that bring those signals into the board. Of course the locations of those three connections on the board. So to put this together, what I did was I removed the original two ROM sockets. So there was Z33 socket sitting here and Z34 socket sitting here. I then uh, used a couple of uh, rows of wire wrap pins uh, because these had machined metal contacts or high quality pins and I basically just put them in the two outside edges. This left this gap here in the middle of room so when the daughter card is inserted the flash memory can sit down in here and that created enough room that when this is in the case it's not touching the back of the case. Because in essence this row of pins are replicated right here and this row of pins are replicated right here. I can pick up the signals just as you see uh, demonstrated here. If we take a look at the card on the back side you can see the flash memory and its socket. You can see the two rows of pins here that plug down into those uh, wire wrap sockets on the uh, motherboard <clears throat> and you can see the point to point wiring I did. Wiring this was kind of difficult because the pinouts are, are kind of funky. Uh, by funky what I mean is because this device is on the bottom of the board, pin 1 is here on the bottom of the board for this device, but pin 1 for the Z33 socket is over here. So it, it made keeping in my head how the wiring was to be set up uh, interesting. So another vert, uh, view of the little adapter board here again. And another view. So in this picture I've got the adapter board sitting upright. This row of pins would plug in here. This row of pins would of course plug in here. Another view of the same thing. Uh, the little white connector here for going into over here to bring an A11, 12, and 13 is there. It doesn't show up well in this picture but something to note is these pins are bent slightly inward. Uh, that's because the spacing let me step back to that photo. Actually, this photo will work. The spacing between these two sets of pins is not exactly on point 0.1 centers. It's a little bit narrower than point 0.1. And so, although it doesn't show in the picture, these two connectors and the pins are bent in slightly to make up for that, that slight bit of difference. If I was to do a printed circuit board, I would capture that positioning you know, perfectly. It would be on about a 0.05 in, offset uh, so it would plug in solidly. So again there's the view of the pins in the ROM. We're back to the original picture. Uh, something else to note here is this little dip switch. Position 4 isn't used in this case. Positions 1, 2, and 3 represent pins A16, 15, and 14. And I'm using those as bank selects uh, to select you know, which ROM image I want to use out of the flash memory. It's a similar thing to what I did for the character generator replacement. So this is a little diagram I drew up to help me wire the card. The pinouts here are from the back side of the card, this, the side without the, the connector pins or the uh, flash memory socket, as if you were looking down through the board. And this is what I tried to say a little bit earlier. The pins that go down into the Z33 and Z34 sockets, of course, have a normal pinout. However, because the flash memory is mounted upside down in there, its VCC becomes in this upper right-hand corner parts flipped over 180 degrees and so it made this interesting because I had to connect VCC to VCC, ground to ground and I kept getting messed up in my head as I wired this putting pin 32 over here and pin 1 over here. Uh, after this was wired up I did a complete checkout pin to pin for shorts between all the pins 
and then I verified every wire connection and I actually went through that exercise twice uh, just because it was a little bit confusing because of the uh, guy here being flipped over. So we kind of have another picture here of how the little card was wired up. Uh, of course VCC is hooked to right enable, same as before, right enable gets pulled high. The chip enable on the flash is grounded. All of the pins here that don't have colors coming off of them are picked up from the Z33 and Z34 sockets and wired appropriately. Uh, the red, yellow, and green wires come off, of course, the board of that white connector, and then those wires go off to the main PCB to pick it up. And then we've got the dip switch in there, and on the dip switch, if they're closed, they're grounded, and that pulls the pin low. If they're open, there's a 1K pull-up resistor that pulls the pin high. Positions 1, 2, and 3 are hooked to A, 14, 15, and 16, and that becomes a bank select. And I've kind of drawn here what the bank select looks like. With all three positions on, we get a zero, zero, zero because these are on, they're switched to ground. And that would bring in the level two version one ROM image, et cetera, et cetera, to where if you know, in the, the on, off, off, or zero, one, one pattern here, I would have the level two a version 1.3 image. Uh, the final product's a bit different than here that I, in that I put the level one basic here and I put uh, a modified version of basic here. So that's pretty quickly, you know, a simple schematic of how that board is wired. So I thought I'd go ahead and talk a little bit to how I've mapped the various ROM images uh, into the master ROM image that has you know, the collection of all the images in it. I have not found version 1.0 or 1.1 of the level 2 basic yet, so I don't have any ROM files for those. For the level 2 version 1.2, I found a couple different sets out there on the web. Uh, I'm using this level 2 ROM version 1.2 image here. That's a 12K image. It was loaded at address 08000 and occupies, occupies address through 0AFFF. Note that the rows in yellow here are inaccessible. They're just wasted space. Uh, you know, the Model 1 can read up to 12K of ROM. And then that 4K above it becomes the I.O. space, video memory and keyboard, etc. I then took a, a version 1.3 image. It was in three files. And I've loaded those three files into these address banks. I've taken a level 1 ROM image and loaded it into the, this bank. And then I have a ROM image it's a slightly modified version of the version 1.2 ROM that I created that's loaded here. Uh, the idea will be to eventually find the ROM images for version 1 and version 1.1 just so this is complete. And I've still got potentially two other banks here that could have you know, other variants, uh, you, you know, whatever inside of them. So there's kind of a, a view of the memory map as uh, I've laid it out. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, mods that I've made here to the system. Both of the original ROM sockets have been removed. I've used a wire wrap pin with a, a machined uh, socket to it, so they're a high quality socket, only in the two outer positions, leaving the inner positions open. So this would have been one socket here and one socket here. In this configuration, I'm still picking up all the pins because I'm on the two outside rows. So I've got all of the same pins available. Uh, the next piece is the daughter card. So the daughter card's got some pins on both sides that connect to those uh, wire wrap sockets. It's got a 29F010 uh, flash memory in here. The daughter card plugs down in in this direction. And if you notice, what's happened here is the flash memory is on the other side of the card. And that's kept the height here low enough that this assembly will fit into the uh, case of the computer. Uh, it'll fit in there with plenty of clearance left. Uh, the original design for this, it was so tall that I couldn't get it down into the case. Let me check and make sure the pins are aligned correctly. The next thing here is the dip switch. Switches 1, 2, and 3 allow me to pick one of eight uh, ROM banks. The intent here is for that to be a level 2 version 0, a level 2 version 1, level 2 version 1.2. I don't have the ROM images yet for version 1.0 and 1.1, but that is the 
level two ROM dot uh, level two version one dot two ROM image. Uh, get the camera up here. Anyhow, there it is. That's the. Oops. Again, there it is. The uh, level two basic uh, version one dot two. At least I believe it to be 1.2. I've got to do some checks on work and validate. I've then also got, oh, sorry for the focus there, version 1.3, which would be there, and that should be the ROM version 1.3. If we come back up on the monitor, we should get the ROM version 1.3 banner, and we do the mem size and the RS level 2 basic. We can then come back and go even further. Power the computer off. In position four of the ROM is level one basic. So bring it up and we should have level one basic. And there it is, level one basic. And finally, I've got occupying, oops, sorry about dropping the camera, in the next ROM position. I have my modified level 2 basic. Swing the camera back up. And this should be, I've not actually tried this position yet, but this should be my modified, and there it is, the Shadowtron blog uh, level 2 basic. So this really is kind of a quick demo of the final state of the design. You've seen this evolve through a number of iterations. Uh, this really gets me to the final state I wanted, and that is where I could use a ROM or a large flash memory to have various versions of the, uh, the, the system ROMs uh, to pick whichever one I wanted to play with. Uh, the next little, little bit here just to point out is this system does have the character generator ROM here that I believe has, yeah, that, that one has both the uh, old ROM and the new ROM as well in it. So it's got the old lowercase ROM and the new lowercase ROM. And again, you can pick it from the dip switches down here. Anyhow, uh, there's the demo. Thanks for watching.